I'm sure you all have a lot of favorite programs. Can you think back to uh, when you were younger and some of the things that you like to watch on television? What, what, what do you think were some of your favorite things that you like to watch? Sesame Street and Captain Kangaroo. Do you remember any of the characters on Sesame Street that you might have liked, especially liked? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, he, he was sort of big and he always made funny jokes. And he, I used to think that on the count, you run your count when you go one. Then you'd have thunder coming down <laughs> from the sky and there would be rain coming down. Birds can't count. I, I always dreamt that um, Big, Bird, Big Bird was green and his beak was little. <laughs> Bob used to make up those songs and um, he'd sing them and like we get to beat and he had counting involved with the songs and the games they had, the people um, had. Bob was my favorite. Scene nine, take one, Bob McGrath. Take black. Ready, Bob, five seconds. Mike, cue, and dissolve. I'm Bob McGrath, and I come off the street and walk in through the door at uh, 81st Street where we tape, and suddenly I'm on set, and I'm Bob of Sesame Street. I've watched the show grow from a very simple show to, I, I think, a, a really beautiful and rather sophisticated show if you think about all of the parts that go into make up each one-hour show and we've encompassed so much more over these past 10 years. And I guess I've grown very, very gradually. I think all of us have, but I feel that I've, I've grown myself in some of the, in the way that I deal with children. I think we're listening to children much more attentively and accurately now and meeting some of the responses and responding to children much, much better. And I guess inadvertently that has really become part of my own real life and hopefully I, uh, I at times even deal with my own children as, <laughs> as well as I deal with the kids on the show, but it really has become a part of my own lifestyle. When I'm looking at a script and, and learning a script and I see that it involves children on the street, I try and enter the piece through the eyes of a three or four year old. Oh, I sit in the street all the time. I used to watch Sesame Street when I was one year old, and my mother put me in the playpen to watch it. Okay, you want to try the head on? Ready for this? I attempt to always kind of go back, and sometimes I even use my own children to do this, especially when they were younger. I'll ask them about a piece and how they think about it. Now you do exactly like me. Put, put your, your hands on your head. That's good. Yes, that's just what I said. Mm -hmm. Now you look exactly like me. Okay, you ready for some more? This is hard. Put your hand Most on interesting your part eyes. of the whole Put process of how any of us got into it is that kids did the final casting for the show. And they did it by this means. Uh, quite a number of actors in town auditioned for the show by doing... Uh, test, little test pieces similar to what we would be doing on the live show and they showed them to thousands of kids in different parts of the country and they took little uh, pieces of, uh, uh, they, they tested the kids on what they remembered and who they identified most strongly with and by that they came down and chose the original cast of four and I was fortunate enough to be one of them. We did um, people meeting in your neighborhood I, when I was little, I used to think, I think, like, I rem like when I see someone, I think of them, and they're dressed in a special uniform, and I think, didn't I see that on Sesame Street? Are you the milkman or the postman or something? Oz the crossing guard's a person in your neighborhood. That's right, in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. We can do things with a Muppet that we could never do with a, a, a person. Otherwise, I think some children's shows get to be very uh, kind of saccharine sweet and uh, a, little, a little too icky uh, when people are talking to each other about certain subjects. But you can do that and bounce it off an Oscar and tell him, you know, have him tell you that you're crazy and you're nuts and uh, you know, go away and get lost. 
thought, but still you can make your point, well, and you can do it much more well, effectively well, sometimes. You got your water. Why don't you do some growing? We haven't got all day, you know. Oscar, what, what are you what are you doing? I feel sad when you're sad. Feel glad. About six or seven years ago, uh, I was invited to do a, a telethon in Vancouver for the Variety Club, which is a national Canadian organization. And I've been doing now six or seven, eight telethons a year for the past six or seven years um, in all the major cities from Montreal to Vancouver and Edmonton and, and so forth. And most of them go directly to children, uh, to building Center cerebral palsy units, building hospitals, the deaf and, and the uh, handicapped I guess children. I'm uh, involved I'd in like raising five or six million dollars a year. Uh, around the home, I have the same problems to deal with that any parent does with children growing up. All of them, any that you can think of, we have them right here from our nine to our 19 year old. And that encompasses everything. So obviously, I can't laugh and smile and sing and chuckle through all of those problems. Uh, I guess basically, I'm hopefully I'm myself. I, I don't think I have the time or the talent to to be somebody totally different on set because uh, it takes much too much energy, so I find it much easier basically to be myself. And I think that's pretty much true with most of the people on set. Well, yeah. With a fish tank, you never know what's going to happen next. I wonder why he's doing that over I, there. I, I don't know. Oh, he must have been too tired to go home right yeah. now.